Okay, hi, it's Paul Green with another one of our regular Spotlight On uh, broadcasts. And uh, today I'm joined by Sh Jackie Sherman. Hi, Jackie. Hi. So um, do you want to tell us, so we're going to explore in a little bit more detail your business journey, uh, ask you a few questions and get a few top tips out of you later on in the session. Uh, but first of all, do you just want to introduce yourself and let people know who you are and what you do? Yes. Hi, I'm Jackie Sherman, uh, the consultant's consultant. What does that mean? It means I mentor and coach independent consultants and small partnerships to build a better business than they could on their own. Um, we combine our experiences, skills, knowledge and contacts to plot a path that leads to the business that they really want and make sure that they do the actions to make it a reality. I think that bit's really important. So that's, uh, that's me. Okay, excellent. So tell me, how did you get to where you are today then? What was your, what was your journey? My journey, I suppose, I mean, I spent a, a lot of years in the health service, first as a nurse and then into management. Uh, reaching the heady heights of the chief executive of an NHS trust. Um, and then I, I left uh, to set up my own leadership uh, coaching um, company and discovered that I knew very little about how to run a business or how to network um, to acquire clients. So I had to go on um, a learning journey of my own. Uh, which resulted in me getting involved with an organisation called Ascentive, who taught me referral marketing and how to get uh, how to get people to leverage the full value of their network to help them build their business. Um, and then for the last eight years, I've been teaching and passing that knowledge on to other people. I now concentrate just purely on my favourite type of client, which are. Um, solo consultants who left employment like I did and set up their own uh, business as a specialist and need to learn how to turn that into a business um, that earns them a living or achieves whatever it is they want to achieve from that endeavour. So that's, that's how I got to where I am now. So, in okay. uh, you know, a 20 year journey. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I can uh, um, align behind that. I think when I became uh, independent, you know, you don't know what you don't know, unfortunately, do you? When you uh, dive into this world. But hey, so um, so it was a little bit like the uh, whatever that shaving advert was, was, uh, you know, so and so impressed. I bought the company. You actually went on an incentive course and was that impressed and that's what had you uh represent them wasn't it for a, for a while yes i think because it, it it absolutely matched my values you know working um people who are working in small businesses on their own it's really lonely um and it's hard to you cannot be everything you cannot be an expert at everything so building around you a network that supports you and and helps you and introduces you to the right clients there's a whole wealth of things but it's that sense of being with like-minded people and being part of community mm -hmm. while still running your own business which appeals to me and appeals i think to most small business owners mm. so what was your first ventures into networking like jackie uh, <laughs> horrendous um you know, having left the health service with no commercial background or or, or network, um, I set out and went to this thing called networking, which was a concept that was brand new to me, and went along to a big chamber event where there was hundreds of people all on tables and completely lost my bottle. That's the only way to put it. I suddenly thought, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be with these people. And it took me about 20 minutes to uh, to go and join in um, while I got my nerve back. No, I did. And I did go and join in and nobody at me. So it worked. But I also realised that I needed to learn how to, that this was a new skill that I had to learn. So set out to go and learn it, really. 
Yeah, I, th I think I think it's very true. Uh, yeah, I mean, my my first experience was going to a, a, a BNI meeting many many years ago down in down when I lived in Maidenhead. Um, uh, got there really early, and um, I was actually earlier than anybody else because I guess I was I was you know keen not to be late. Um, and then you have the fear that you're in the wrong place when there's no other car parks, cars in the car park. You think is this the right place? But it was. People started to uh, uh, rock up, and as you know, BNI is I guess at the top end of uh, networking, very structured, very process driven. Uh, lots of responsibilities um, and so that was quite a shock for me because I didn't know what networking was and I thought blimey if it's this uh, this isn't for me um, so I think it's important to say to anybody listening that there's a wide range of different styles of networking that's out there and you really need to find you know what you're comfortable with um, and what's going to work for you given the uh, given the people in the room I guess. Yes and I, I like I, I discovered that and I liked groups where I really got to know people well. I'm not so keen on things where I dip in and out um, mm. and you're never meeting the same person more than once. I find them uh, harder. I, I like groups that help me develop the relationships that, that, that are crucial because it's not just about going out meeting hundreds of people. It's going out and meeting like-minded people you can actually work with. Yeah, and that yeah. takes time and networking helps the networking groups help you that help you achieve that are, are the ones that that suit me best yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what do you think are the biggest mistakes that uh, people make when they're networking in general i think most uh, mostly they don't prepare but hence why i ran into problems um but uh, uh and the other thing they do is thinking that they, their clients are going to be in the room so that they've got to go around and sell to everybody in the room. Um, mm. And I think that's that's the biggest mistake people make. It, you know, and, and people, a lot of people struggle with the whole concept of going along just to develop a relationship in the first place mm -hmm. and not think about that person as a potential client. Um, what you really want is to meet lots of people who know lots of your, people who you would want as clients because they can introduce you. Mm -hmm. Your network is much bigger than the people in the room. Your network is everybody they know. So, and you access them by your relationship. And I think a lot of people struggle with that concept. Um, they think they're doing it, but actually what they're doing is standing up and pitching to the room. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think and that's the biggest mistake people make and not preparing and not having a goal and an objective for their networking is the other one, I think. You know, why are you there? What do you want to achieve? It's not just rocking up and saying I had a good time. It's uh, seeing some results from it. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And also, you know, it's, it's not just a commitment of money. It's a commitment of your time, isn't it? Um, I know we're, we're mostly virtual now, but, you know, you've got your travelling time there to and from whatever, wherever the venue is and the time while you're there, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so it's, you really do need to, um, you know, make use of that time um, and have, have, an, have an idea about what you want to get from meeting, whether that's meeting someone new or reconnecting with someone you met last time or whatever it might be, I think that is very important. You see a lot of people yeah. just winging it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you, so obviously um, over the last 18 months, um, uh, networking has pretty much been online. What, what, do you, what do you think are the pros and cons of that from your point of view? From my point of view, it saved me a fortune. <laughs> but, yep. uh, in, uh, in um, but I think the biggest saving has been in time, as like you alluded to, um, the travelling time to and from events. Uh, so I think it, it, it has that value. Also, it's possible to meet people from further afield because they're not, they're not having to travel. You're not trying to travel to a venue. So my, my um, sphere of influence, you know, the people I've met have come from a wider geographical area. Um, but again, that's got its negative side as well is, you know, depends on what your business model is, where, you, where your clients are based 
whether you want people who, who are in your locality or you want to meet people further afield. But I think that's one of the real benefits. Um, yeah, I mean, there's the benefits. I think the downside, for me, I think it's nicer to meet people face to face. Um, it's harder to get to know people online. Mm. Um, and it's harder to run a networking event that really facilitates people getting to know each other as well. If you're not careful in online, a few uh, few noisy people take over uh -huh. a group and other people don't. You get people who never say a word. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so so that, 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 that's, um, that's the downside, I think. But, but yeah, it has some just, advantages. Yeah, you can probably you do more. Yeah, you, you've you've said before that you miss the sort of like mix and mingle stuff before the formal yeah. meeting and, and post meeting and stuff like that, which you can't really uh, emulate because if you well, most I know there's other platforms, but Zoom I guess is the most popular. It, it's a pretty flat space, isn't it, where you're just on on a screen like Celebrity Squares for those of you that remember yeah, Celebrity yeah. Squares. I think it's harder to get into the personal conversations as well because they happen over coffee. Mm. Um, and when you're mingling um where people talk, you know um had more spontaneous conversations mm. yeah so or if you're doing it online you have to build that into the into the agenda for the event that it mm. helps people to do that mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think one advantage, because it has been a great time to network, uh, because, you know, it's low to no cost, uh, as we've mentioned. Um, but also, you know, it takes away that anxiety that some people get when they go into physical networking for the first time, which you touched on last time, where you're just walking into a room full of strangers, effectively, which can be a bit daunting for a lot of people, can't it? Yes, but equally, some people find it more daunting to talk on screen yeah um, so they they tend to be quite passive within in the meetings so mm -hmm. but but walking into a room full of strangers i think is something everybody finds hard um yeah and certainly does put some people off i think uh, a good networking group will always make people feel welcome and make sure that they don't feel uncomfortable um mm -hmm. You know, so they're the better networks. They're the ones to go back to. Mm -hmm. Now, another yeah. string to your another string to your bow is is the Green Business Network, isn't it? So, do you want to say a little bit about that? Oh, uh, I haven't planned to, but I can. Yes, I'm I'm chair of the local Green Business Network. We have a, a vision that every business locally will have a green strategy, so that they we're all doing our part to reduce the impact um, that we have on the, the negative impact we have on the environment. Um, so we offer a whole range of services. I became, again, I joined to learn and ended up getting invited to be a trustee and I'm now the chairman, um, purely to help build. What I bring to that is my skills in helping people to build a network. And, and build the community so that's what we're doing and we run a networking group specifically for businesses that provide green solutions and green alternatives because those people the more they sell the more we can help them get in front of their right clients the more people who are going to be doing things which are good for the planet and that helps us all absolutely so, yeah so, so you, you're a busy girl and you've been doing this for quite a while. What, what, what's, what's your why? What sort of like drives you and gets you out of bed in the morning? What drives me, from a work point of view, um, what drives me is that sense of community, of not being alone, of doing it together. I mean, my background as, as a child, my father was in the colonial service in Africa, so we I never lived anywhere longer than two years and moved, often moved every six months. So that meant we're constantly having to make new relationships. 
And that got to be a problem when we came to live in England and I was spectacularly unsuccessful at breaking into established friendship groups at school. I was that weird woman from Africa, the girl from Africa. And that was quite difficult until I joined the growing Red Cross and I found it really easy to make friends when I was with people with a shared sense of purpose and ideals. And I've carried that on in my whole career. Um, I was in the RAF, I was in the NHS, running a hospital trust. They were all communities of people working together for a shared, uh, shared ideal. And what I like about what I do now is I'm still doing that. I'm helping other people to do that, to build their community around them and get that support. And I get it myself from my networking groups and my inner circle of, um, of uh, um, in the circle of my network. Um, I think a lovely example was when we went into lockdown, the first thing I did was set up what we call lunch online, where we get my inner circle and myself get together every, started off every fortnight, just to support each other and see us through what was at that point, the complete unknown, but we were in it together, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's a lovely example of a of a community working together. No, absolutely. Tell me, still me. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's 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 been important for a lot of people, you know, because obviously, as you, as we touched on earlier, running your own business is, is a lonely place to be anyway. And then when you're cooped up in your house um, because of lockdown, you know, it, it doesn't really add to uh, 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 that, does it? So, you know, being able to connect with people and sort of like, and I, I think that's that's been important, you know, because as you know, because I've been on some of those calls, you know, some people have needed that as like an emotional release for like the pressure they're under, yeah. haven't they? They've found that valuable to actually, I guess, be more honest than they normally would be in, in, a, in a, you know, face-to-face -face situation because people um, appreciate you know the difficulties that that i guess most businesses that have gone through yeah so um go on. Go on. so um you touched on obviously your emotional connection to um uh, your business and that's something that ascentive trained and actually helped me discover what my um uh, emotional connection was to my business and i found that's quite an important thing to, to share with people because that that gives a much deeper connection doesn't it between people when they see you um when that they get they understand what the driving force is do, do you think that's that's valuable for people to understand what their underlying driving force is well it's um it's absolutely key i think and when i'm uh, mentoring coaching people is getting them to explore when, when, when we're exploring their vision for their business is really getting underneath the why they're in the business that, that they're in, you know, what is, what's connecting them emotionally to their business um, is, is really important. Um, and it then sustains you um, when things get tough it, and, and, and helps to keep you on, on, on the right road, you know, is it emotionally fulfilling? If it's not, why are you doing it? Most of us are in small businesses because we chose to be there, but we need to make sure that it actually is delivering what we need to, because it's tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's certainly what helps me get up in the morning and makes me do what I, what I have to do, all the bits I don't like doing as well as the bits I do. Yeah, there's always those bits. Of, there's always those bits, unfortunately. But, but I, I, that's, sort of like, that's sort of like leads in quite nicely to the next question that I'm going to ask you, because you know, your everyone's personal journey is what makes them unique. So that does help them stand out, I guess, from uh, competitors. So what would you what would you say uh, on top of that? What would you say makes you different from your competitors? Because obviously, there's uh, other coaches and business advisors out there. So what 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 has you stand out from the crowd? Would you say? Well, I think there are loads of uh, um, coaches and, and mentors around. I agree with that. In preparing for this, um, I put down me. I think it is my unique blend of knowledge, skills, and experience and contacts. I've worked in 
the public sector environment um, and I've worked in the political environment a bit as well from that as well as working in small businesses I've been on that journey myself that I'm helping other people to but it's combining that with theirs and I think what what people say they get from working for me, which is what's really important, I think, is what the clients get, is um, is that connecting, that making new connections and making new ways of looking at the business. So I always think my, my unique skill is really the ability to connect, connect mm -hmm. people to people who they wouldn't normally think of mixing with, but also bringing together ideas and concepts in new ways that help people take a left field look at what they're trying to achieve. All those aha moments people get. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think that's my 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 key skill. So yeah, I don't know if that answers what you wanted. So. No, 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 that, that would be my experience as well. You know, you are you are a very good networker and, and connector. Um, and, you know, often I've put people in touch with you because I know uh, I might not have the connections for that that's going to help them, but you you more than likely will. Um, so, yes, I, I definitely recognise that. So as, and, if as we... I, and if I don't know the person they want to be, I usually know someone who does. Yeah, exactly. And exactly yeah. Those wider connections is, you yeah. know. Yeah. Second, so, third degree connections. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um uh, obviously, uh, COVID has been most small businesses' biggest challenge over the last 18 months or so. Outside of that, on your business journey, what would you say is the biggest challenge that, that you faced? Uh, when I started, I would have said networking because I didn't know how to do it and it scared me. Um, but then it was really technology is my biggest challenge. And, and I think most people, including you, Paul, will know that if uh, that sort of come into terms with technology, I find particularly difficult. Um, it's not because I'm not in intellectually capable of doing it, I can. I think it's because my heart and soul isn't in it. I like meeting people, I like being with people, and I see it as a, a bit of a barrier mm. between people. So I know other people see it as connecting them. When for me, it it, it adds a layer. Mm -hmm. What you've got. Um, so that's what I, that's what I struggle with. And I think we all struggle with technology um, when it lets us down. And <laughs> so oh, that's the biggest um, frustration. Yeah. That is the biggest frustration. That's the frustration. Yeah. But the challenge really is getting my head around um, not physically being with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's what I like. It's not the same talking to somebody online as it is being in a room having a cup of coffee together. No, absolutely, absolutely. And when, you know, when you're yeah. doing that face to face to face, you've got to make an effort to dress your bottom half. Whereas on most of these calls, you've only got to worry about the top half, haven't you? <laughs> you've been peeping. <laughs> <laughs> So you kindly agreed to sort of like share some of your wealth of uh, knowledge with us. So I'm just going to put you in uh, solo mode and hand the screen over to you um, for you to do just that. So there you go. The floor is yours, Jackie. Right. Thank you very much. Well, when I was learning biology and again, when I came into business, I learned a very simple maxim. Um, um, that space means death. Now that can sound terribly dramatic, but living organisms and businesses are dynamic entities, and that means they need to be constantly renewing themselves to stay alive or to stay viable, and that means they need to be fed. Now it's easy when running a single handed consultancy to take your foot off the accelerator when you hit your ceiling. You know, that few, my diary is full, most with regular clients I can count on. So I can coast uh, along nicely now. And then the complacency sets in. A lot of changes in you and your business don't. 
maybe it's so slow that you don't notice at first, um, or your largest client suddenly sells up, sells up and doesn't need you anymore, and your figures start to slide. Well, really, what I would say before you get to that stage is to have a strategy, a constant strategy of growth. Um, now, there are lots of different biz business models that you can use to continually grow. Um, so how do you choose the right one? Because I've identified at least 14, um, from simple outsourcing to a full mergers and acquisition strategy. Um, how do you choose the right one for you? Um, that's really going to work. So I want to share with you um, a, a simple model of uh, seven sort of questions or areas to look at and to get the tick the boxes ticked on those for any particular business model you look at for how you want to grow. So I thought I'd share that with you. And it starts with your vision and your purpose. What do you want to achieve um, from this business, both for the business and your lifestyle? The stuff we've already talked about, the why you're in the business that you're in. So it's been clear on that. And then there's you. What is your identity? Who do you want to be in this business? And I think this is a really fundamental one for consultants. Um, do you want to be the entrepreneur who builds a business, scales it up and sells it on? Do you want to just be the MD of a, a, a business with other people in it? Or do you want to be the technical expert? Or the teacher? Or something else? So it's been clear on your identity, who you want to be, what you want to be. And then look at your values. What are the principles that are important to you to hold on to in how you build your business, how you run your business? You know, if family values are really important to you, do you really want to build a big multi-million pound business that's going to take you away from the home all the time? So I think the first stage is look at some business models and look at the one where you tick those boxes. That model's going to tick your boxes against those three fundamental questions. And then now check the reality of what it will take. And first of all, uh, check your beliefs. What do you believe about this world and you that will help or hinder you to achieve what you want from your vision through that business model. And then what are your capabilities? What skills, knowledge and resources will you need, or maybe you already have, um, to, to deliver that? For instance, if you're going in for, to look into really grow a business that you can um, you can grow by acquiring another business or joining with another person. Have you got have you got the finance for that? But also, have you got the right skills and uh, and knowledge to to work through that? If not, where did you get it from? Then is your behaviours what you will actually have to do to make this vision come true? And are you willing to do that? And then last but not least, is looking at the environment. And the environment is everything that isn't you. So it can be the practicalities of the physical environment. If you're going to grow your business to be bigger than you, do you need to move out of your spare bedroom office and uh, get premises? Do you need to move? Do you need to be in a different part of the country? Do you need to travel abroad? All sorts of um, issues might arise. And of course, the environment includes all the other people who are affected. Now, if you're in partnership, um, that will have an impact, or you've got people working for you. 
But more importantly, perhaps, it's the people outside of work, your family who might have uh, have a say. You might think it's fun um, always working away from home, seeing people in different parts of the country, but it might not be so great for your family. So um, those are some of the things to, to think about and get some answers to those questions and, and, and match those against different types of business models. If you'd like some help in, and you'd like to uh, share my 14 different, uh, different ways of uh, growing the business, then I'd be happy to talk to you uh, further about it. Um, four minutes is far too short to talk about 14 different business models. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Some uh, uh, great advice there. Um, so uh, thank you for sort of sharing that uh, knowledge with us and uh, food for thought. And as you say, yeah, it's not a long time to uh, <laughs> uh, go through the whole thing, but maybe another time. So one one final thing then from you before I let you go, uh, given your sort of like business experience and from one sort of small business owner to any others out there that are, are listening to this, what would you say is your your one top tip for any of those business owners? this won't come as a surprise from our previous conversation it's spend time defining and developing your vision for your business this is not a waste of time navel gazing it it's really important but more importantly having developed what your vision is start living it act as if you've already achieved it that has deep psychological impact on you but also it has some direct um, advantages. First of all, it helps you with your decision making. Every decision you make in your business asks, does that get me closer to my vision? And pick, it also picks you up when you uh, when you falter. You know, this is where I, this is what I'm trying to achieve, and this is what I'm already achieving um, to keep you going. So that would be my tip start with the end in mind as it were absolutely and live it yeah i i, th I think that is very that is a uh, uh, good advice because i think i found it uh, much easier to sort of say no to a lot of things or make decisions uh, based on what i want to ultimately achieve and I, I i think sometimes you know with visions and missions i think sometimes small businesses think they're a little bit woolly and for corporate businesses and what have you um, I I don't. I think you know you should be clear in terms of what you want to achieve and where you want to end up, and that that does help you. Um, you know, not going down rabbit holes or chase golden eggs or Absolutely. whatever the expression is. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, and you can sort of keep your focus, so you're 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 not straying from the. You know, it's never a straight line, but you're not sort of straying too far from the path. You know, you can easily get back on track. So that's it. Your ordeal is over, uh, Jackie. So you did well with technology today. Um, so uh, thanks again for your time. I'll end the broadcast there. Right. Thank you very much. And thank you, people, who are listening. <laughs>